I'm making this video because I believe that I fall somewhere in the autism spectrum, but I am not 100% sure. I did try getting an official diagnosis, but because I'm an adult, the healthcare system here in Canada won't cover the cost of the assessment. It would cost at least $2,000, and even if I had the money to spend on something I don't necessarily need, I would still run the risk of being assessed by somebody who just simply dismisses my concerns. Watching a lot of videos about adult assessments, that's not uncommon. Also, my parents tried to get me tested when I was a kid, and not for autism, but just to kind of figure out what was wrong with me. But our family doctor wouldn't give us a referral because I was doing good in school and at the time I still talked to other students. Anyway, I know that you can't give me an official diagnosis, but if you're autistic I would really appreciate your input and it would be very helpful for me to know if you think that I am autistic. Or if you think that I'm not, that would be helpful too. I know for a fact that I'm not neurotypical and autism spectrum disorder just makes so much sense when I compare it to my life, but maybe it's something else and maybe you can help guide me in the right direction if it is. That said, here's why I think I'm autistic. It actually never occurred to me that I may be autistic, but my sister was taking a module on autism and other disorders and it convinced her that I was on the spectrum. When she told me I didn't really care or give it too much thought, whether I was or not, it didn't change who I was. And I like who I am. But the more I learned about it, the more I related to the common autistic traits. And I related to so many of the things that autistic people were sharing about their own life on the spectrum, because I've watched a lot of videos on this. That's when it dawned on me that if I am autistic, it would help at least explain so much of my life and my struggles. And maybe it could give me guidance in the areas that I just can't seem to function well. Also, it could be a group that I could finally fit in. I've always felt too different to fit in. I'm too much of some things and too little of others. For that same reason, I felt the need to make this video. If autistic people don't believe I'm autistic enough, well, that's just another group to be excluded from. I would very much like to avoid that, so I'm getting it out of the way immediately and It'd be pretty cool, very nice, if you could help me figure it out. I know you don't have enough information yet, so I'm gonna do my best to provide that now. I've taken three different online autism tests, and in all three, I got results just below the very likely marker, meaning that I have a lot of autistic traits or tendencies, but there are some very common ones that I don't relate to. The biggest traits that I do relate to are in the social or socializing area. I don't like being in groups of people, I hate small talk, I don't really like meeting new people, I just don't like interacting with most people. If I'm not sure that they're gonna be a part of my life, it just feels like a waste of time and unnecessary to have a conversation with them. I'm also not good at conversations, so that doesn't help. I do like and enjoy the company of people who like me and already know me, it's just that the process of starting from scratch with someone new just feels so tedious and exhausting. I also suck at maintaining friendships though, so even the very few people that I do let into my life end up just kind of just fading away really. Other than my sister, I have no close friends. Maybe because I hate meeting new people and avoid conversations? I don't know. Beats me. I'm about to turn 29 and I've only had two girlfriends. The first one made all the moves and I kind of just went along with it. The second one, my sister helped me out to make it happen. I broke up with both of them through email. Because I'm good at writing. Hey, they were detailed thoughtful and respectful emails. I knew I would be horrible at explaining and expressing myself in person face to face and I didn't want anything left unsaid. I understand that this is considered to be very bad but I still think that my emails were much better than anything I could have said in person. Moving on from that, I'm, I'm often called quiet, shy, and even antisocial. I do enjoy a certain amount of human interaction but 
I love being by myself, with myself. I could literally spend weeks by myself without leaving the house and be happy. I know because I've done it. Another area where I relate a lot is routine. I, I like routine. My days, when I describe them, sound boring to most people. I love my days. I love what I do every day. And I do almost the exact same thing every day. I don't like change, but I'm also not completely opposed to it. But if I do make a change, it just kind of becomes part of the routine. Sometimes I'll eat the exact same thing for days. I don't know if this is part of it, but I also wear the same pants every day. Like, I have a bunch of different jeans and shorts, but I'll just wear the same pants every single day. My sister actually bought me pants because she noticed this, thinking that I needed new pants. And so now I wear the pants that she got me every single day. I can't go to sleep without washing my face and brushing my teeth. Like, I literally can't do it. It makes me extremely uncomfortable and anxious if I'm already in bed and haven't done it yet. I do have stims, but it's kind of a gray area because my stims are things that some neurotypical people do as well. I'm constantly cracking my knuckles and my neck. Uh, when I'm sitting down, I vibrate my leg up and down and I bite off the skin of my fingertips. When it comes to sensory issues, I have trouble with loud noises. Like even at church, when I still went to church, when people would start clapping, it was bad. It, it felt like my left ear was breaking. The way I describe it is that after a certain volume, everything just sounds like a broken speaker, muffled and distorted. I also have a problem with very bright lights. I like wearing sunglasses outside most of the time, even when it's cloudy. I hate it when people take pictures with the flash on because it basically leaves me partially blinded for a long time and it can give me a headache. Weirdly enough though, I use light mode on my computer and my phone because dark mode has a similar effect as the flash of a camera on me. Like I hate, hate reading white text on a black screen. It hurts my eyes. Another thing is that I do have a few things that I am very passionate about and I can be a bit obsessive about them. If you do end up getting me to talk, it's probably about movies or existential stuff like the simulation theory or like the law of attraction, weird stuff, supernatural stuff. I can talk about that stuff for hours. But most other topics, I'll just lose interest and my mind will go elsewhere. There are other things that I relate to, but those are kind of the big ones. Now I want to share the ones that I don't relate to because these are the reason why I have doubts about being on the spectrum. Like, I don't avoid eye contact. I, I think I did when I was a kid, but I was told enough times to look at people in the eyes that somewhere along the line, it just stuck. There's a caveat to that one because I don't know if eye contact comes naturally to other people. I'm very self-aware of my eye contact. I'm literally in my head, okay, make a bit of eye contact now, now at the lips, now look away for a second, okay, back at the eyes, look, eye contact, yes, there you go, there you go. lips, eyes, Lips, eyes. Sometimes I worry that I'll make eye contact for too long and make the person feel uncomfortable. It's actually very hard for me to pay attention to the person talking to me because I'm so focused on that whole eye contact process. I can listen so much better if I'm looking away or at the ground when people talk to me, but I avoid doing that because I know it's considered to be very rude. Here's probably the biggest thing though. One of the most common traits among autistic people, at least according to the many articles that I read on the subject, is the struggle or even inability to understand facial expressions and body language, or to understand the nuance of what people mean between the lines. I feel like I'm very perceptive and actually very good at reading facial expressions and some body language. I also have no issues understanding metaphors, sarcasm, or jokes. Actually, 
use those every day. I know that every autistic person is different and don't share all the same traits, but this seems to be one of those traits that is very common, at least from what I read and the videos I saw, so I, I don't know if this disqualifies me from being autistic. But I should probably mention that I've wanted to be an actor since I was five years old. So I've been purposely observing and imitating different human behaviors and expressions closely since pretty much that age. My ability as a performer is also why people watching my videos would probably not assume that I am autistic. Here's a clip from one of my first videos on YouTube. Today I am speaking how racist is and racist. See, I can't even say it because it's so bad. Don't do it. It sucks. You know, the thing I hate the most about it is when people think I am Mexican just because of my accent. There are other people that speak Spanish too, you idiots. Here's one a few years later. I think that babies are not cute. I think most babies are ugly. There are a few babies that are cute, but people act like most babies are cute and they're not. And I'm not just saying this because I was an ugly baby. And this is how I perform now. Actually, you might find it interesting to know that absolutely all of this is written just like with my breakup emails, I find it easier to express myself in writing. So I write what I want to express and then perform it in a way that sounds more like a conversation. Anyway, here's the thing that confuses me the most about whether or not I'm on the spectrum. Empathy. I know there's this big misconception about autistic people not having empathy, but from what I read, most or at least a lot of autistic people do have empathy, but they just usually have affective empathy. Meaning that those autistic people do have emotional empathy. Their emotions are affected by the emotions of others. If they learn about something sad happening, they might not be able to fully put themselves in the situation and completely understand it. But they feel the sadness, even if it's not expressed outwardly or how you would expect. Actually, some autistic people are too empathetic. They feel too much for other people and or animals. Overwhelmingly so. What they often struggle with is cognitive empathy, which is the one where you empathize intellectually, meaning that you can put yourself in the situation in your mind of a person and completely understand their situation, how they're feeling and why. I'm ashamed to admit this, but this video would be incomplete without it. I have cognitive empathy. Intellectually, I understand people's emotions and their struggles and the reasons behind them. I just, I just don't feel an emotional connection to them. I care deeply about the people close in my life, like my sister and my mom. I cried on the phone as I talked to a 911 operator trying to explain that my sister was trying to take her life. I cried when my family dog died. But the thing is, am I really gonna say this? <laughs> Someday people are gonna try to cancel me for saying this. I shouldn't say it but I'm going to. You probably heard recently about the 215 child corpses that were found buried in a residential school. When you heard those news, did you have an emotional reaction? Because I didn't. Intellectually, I understand that it's a horrible and sad situation and my sense of justice tells me that those responsible for it should pay for it. But like, I'm not actually sad about it. Uh, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. I, I feel like I should care and I just don't. On the flip side, I recently watched the Friends Reunion special and I was on the verge of tears in the segment where people talk about how the show saved their lives. So I know that I do have feelings, but so much of the time I just feel like a robot. Like a robot trying to emulate humans. Sometimes I genuinely wonder, do people actually feel strong emotions when they hear horrible news about strangers that they've never met? Or is everyone just pretending because they think that other people care and they don't want to look bad? I also wonder why I cry so easily during Pixar movies or when Captain America picked up a freaking hammer from the ground. But I cry very rarely 
about things in my own life. I cried when a fictional character picked up a magical hammer in a movie from the ground. But I didn't cry when my grandmother died. To be completely honest, part of the reason why I want confirmation on being autistic is because if I'm not, I worry that my disorder could actually be something that's bad. That said, I have a very strict moral compass, so don't worry about me becoming a serial killer. I'm honest to a fault. I'm, I'm serious. My honesty has unintentionally hurt people in the past because I will choose painful truth over kind deceit nine times out of ten. And that one time out of ten, I still won't lie. I'll just omit part of the full story or manage to somehow hold my tongue. That said, I am nice to people, polite, respectful, I don't drink, I've never been high or drunk. I use the turn signal in the car to change lanes even if it's 3 a.m. in the morning and there are zero cars in sight. I follow rules and laws, even rules that I've set for myself that no one else but me holds accountable to. So yeah, not a killer. Anyway, this video is already way too long and I'm not even sure that I can make it reach a good amount of autistic people for me to find what I'm looking for. But please, if you're autistic and you've watched till the end, let me know. Do you think I'm autistic? Thank you.